Can you explain to me what ZX Ventures is sure. and why it makes sense to have somebody who heads up an important part of the business also become the chief marketing officer for the entire business? Yeah, so I mean, ZX Ventures is our innovation and, and ventures arm. Uh, we set up shop in like 2015 to accelerate a little bit of uh, innovation. Uh, you know, in the past it was kind of hard because, you know, innovation takes some time, you know, to, to kind of pay off and to get scale. And whenever we let, uh, you know, innovation compete with our core business for resources, uh, of course, it was second priority, you know. So we, we tried to do something different, you know, to set up another kind of another unit uh, for the company that could really uh, accelerate, you know, have independent resources, uh, you know, different people, new capabilities. Uh, but we got to a stage now, five years later, you know, the thing got some scale. Uh, and we thought it was a great opportunity for us to go there and, kind of start cross-pollinating between ZX and, and our main business. Uh, and that's why I'm kind of co-heading both. And how important is it that the marketing message is in, in line with the innovations of the company? And which goes first? Do you innovate first and then figure out how to market it? Or do you learn from your conversations with the consumer about what sort of things you need to create? So, I mean, today you need to perform, right? You have to deliver products that, that really make a difference in people's lives, because otherwise, you know, people don't buy products and don't feel different uh, of the products just based on pure marketing. Uh, so today it's very important for you to have innovation, you know, to create true differentiation with your products and then market it, you know? So I think innovation in a way is a, it's a fundamental part of the job today. What do you think you bring to the role or to this industry that you think that is, you know, in this industry that's changed that maybe not everybody else has. Sure. Yeah, I mean, before before ZX, I was in marketing for a while, uh, but but it's great because ZX, you know, it's all about uh, learning with startups and with new platforms and things like that. And in a way, you know, I think competitive advantage for the future is going to be understand consumers better than anybody else, create products that address big, big consumer needs, and then deliver it in a in a frictionless way. And that's kind of what we are doing at ZX. You know, ZX we have like a pretty sizable e-commerce business these days. So uh, we have, you know, a lot of consumer understanding. You know, consumers vote with their wallet. So e-commerce is a very good indicator on what works, what does, and what people want. Uh, and and, and I, I really think these are kind of the capabilities that we need in the in the in the core business today. You know, how can we use data uh, to you know to create better products that really have a differentiation. Uh, and then use technology also to deliver it in a, in a seamless way. You know. So the consumer has changed a great deal, not just their um, behaviors and what sort of products they're interested in, but also the way that they consume advertising. Yeah. How are you dealing with that? So this is a, like a massive shift uh, that we're seeing. If you take a look at like 10 years ago, you know, you could probably target consumers in 90% of the time that they were consuming media, right, in general. And today, like, there are a lot of massive platforms and like, very high growth platforms that are ad free, right? If you think about Netflix, if you think about Spotify, if you think about YouTube Premium, if you think about WhatsApp, you know, so increasingly I think consumers are spending a lot of time with platforms that traditional advertising kind of doesn't work, right? So I think in the future it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a combination of advertising with content, you know, you have to go there and you have to produce content and deliver value to consumers in a way they're gonna look for it, you know, and, and not only get interrupted by it. So we, we're kind of trying to do that. You know, we are working a lot, for example, with, uh, with YouTube, you know, currently we have some things, great things going on in Brazil uh, where we are creating content together uh, and then consumers are organically, uh, you know, going to the, to the platform and consuming our content. And there has been a, a shift in interest with consumers to focus on privacy. Yeah. And how do you think that that's going to affect the future of advertising? Well, I mean, this is very recent, right? Uh, uh, I, I, we have a great relationship with Facebook and we talk a lot about this. And even for them, this is kind of a very recent, uh, you know, change in, in, in direction. Uh, I think we will have to, to see how the privacy first thing plays out. But again, you know, I think to the extent that you're gonna be able to deliver value to consumers, create content that engage, provides entertainment to consumers, you're always gonna have the channel. You know, so uh, again, the, the specifics you'll have to work through and that's something that we are very focused on because it, it will have meaningful implications, but it's very early days. If and how should brands get involved in social and political conversations? Yeah, so, you know, f here in current people are talking a lot about purpose and there are different definitions of purpose. A lot of people are talking about 
social causes, you know, and doing good for the world and things like that as, as purpose. Uh, we have a slight different view on that one. We think we should do that, and I think brands need to get involved. I mean, there are so many problems in the world that governments are not going to be able to solve by themselves. So I think brands and companies, they have a role to play. But I think the most important thing is that the core business uh, of, of whatever industry you are, you are in or whatever company you are in is actually positive for people and for society as a, as a whole, you know. So your, your business needs to have meaning and need to impact people in a positive way. Because at the end, you know, you spend, if, if you have like social causes and you, you have activism, whatever, this is like 5%, 10% of what the brand does. But I think consumers are really asking the question, what is the other 90%? You know, your core business where you really spend the money and you spend the time, is that good or bad for, you know, for society? So, I mean, we, we are, you know, a beer company and we love that, you know, beer is a product that brings people together. We think that has a very meaningful role in, in society, you know, and, and, and it's great, uh, you know, takes, you know, people, um, you know, changes people's lives in a positive way. Can you tell me about a campaign where you took a risk and it really paid off? Yeah, so we had one, it actually won a uh, Grand Prix last year here in, in kind of campaign from our team in South Africa from Colin Black Label. Uh, it, it was a campaign about domestic violence. You know, there, is, there are a lot of problems with domestic violence in, in South Africa. And, you know, the Colin Black Label was a, was a masculine brand uh, historically. And a lot of people that, uh, you know, did domestic violence, they were kind of using uh, you know that they were drunk or uh, as an excuse you know for the domestic violence so that's something that we embrace with the brand and you said look real man doesn't give excuses you know and, and we went very broad and it was a super successful campaign and the brand could really impact uh, you know the cause and is there a time where you took a risk based on you know what you felt was happening with data or something and where it really didn't pay off you do so much at the same time that some some things fall in between the you know, between the cracks and you don't pay attention to every single execution and things like that. So in a, you know, back back in the days when, when we were in, in Brazil, we have a, a brand which is called, it's like a lot of fun and things like that. And and we were kind of telling people to have fun during carnival and one of the executions, you know, was saying, uh, you know, uh, leave no at home as, as, as a meaning, you know, go there and have fun, you know, and, and, and seize opportunity and, you know, just enjoy and have a great time. And that was misinterpreted as, you know, if there is sexual harassment or whatever, you should just go with it. And, and there was a huge backlash and we had to apologize. But, you know, again, you, you, sometimes you try to push a little bit and, and, and it, it kind of, you know, get misinterpreted and, you know, you make mistakes. And what have you learned most about consumer trends or consumer behavior since working at ABM? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the market has changed a lot, you know, I, I think in the, you know, in the past, you had kind of a few market of millions, you know, and it was very easy to kind of segment consumers and have like a, a pretty like tight portfolio of brands that address like the whole population. The market is moving from a few markets of millions to millions of market of a few. Uh, and I think marketers, they have kind of two options. You know, one is they try to make the world turn slower. You're going to go luck with that, right? <laughs> or they can adapt themselves to have a much broader portfolio and satisfy uh, you know, many more consumers, right? So, I mean, the, the good news is that technology is helping a lot, you know, in personalizing product and delivering the right product to the right person, you know, at the right time. Uh, but it's a challenge, right? So consumers really, uh, 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 audiences are becoming very niche. And if you're not re ready to cater for these audiences, uh, somebody else will. So you better be prepared for it. And what's coming next, either from a marketing side or from an innovation side that you're most excited about? I think the barrier, you know, between technology companies and, and, and CPGs or, you know, big companies in general is, is getting very blurred. Um, and th this, is a, this is a great opportunity, but also could be a, a massive threat, right? So if you take a look at the level of consumer understanding, uh, the relationship that big technology companies have with consumers today is amazing, you know, allow them to create a much better product to address consumer needs, but, uh, you know, it also allows them to disrupt other, other industries, right? So you take a look at, at Amazon today, Amazon has more than 130 products, you know, and they have a hundred times more information uh, than some of the manufacturers of these products. They have better algorithms, 
uh, and they have the channel right with with these consumers. So, so in a way, I think companies in general they have to be much better uh, at technology and at consumer understanding, you know, to be able to compete in a world where lines are going to be blurred. I think the good news is that the companies that do that, uh, they're going to be very well positioned, you know, to compete. Uh, you know, I, I really believe that probably one of the best things that happened to. Uh, you know, to Walmart in the past 10 years is, is Amazon, right? Because it allowed uh, Walmart to really uh, step up in terms of technology and innovation, and they are, you know, they are doing a great job at it. Is there a campaign that someone else has done, doesn't have to be in the last year, but that you felt like, man, I really wish that I had come up with that. That was such a great idea. Yeah, I, 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 you know, the, the two companies that call my attention this year, of course, Nike, right? Everybody's talking about Nike with Copernic, you know, very bold. Uh, campaign when when we talk about purpose uh, you know and we talk about like your core purpose and social cause I think the the beauty of Nike is that they did both at the same time and that's the magic you know they're kind of they they are inspiring you know every human being to be an athlete and at the same time they're furthering the the cause for social justice you know and they did that in a beautiful way you know it was very risky uh, you know initially a lot of backlash right uh, but at the end, I think it was a brilliant move by, by Nike, you know. And I like a lot the, the, the work that Fernando Machado is doing at, at Burger King. Uh, you know, the Whopper, the tour, I think for me was genius. You know, it's the kind of, the kind of campaign that you wish you thought. Uh, so this, this for me, uh, these two ones are, are the ones that are, caught my attention.